Hello, everyone. It's Marty from Action Coach again. And today I am thrilled to be able to introduce a new friend of mine, Nicole Bindorf. And she is joining us today from Prosper Well Financial. And we get to have the opportunity to be able to hear her story, not just about where she is today, but how she got there and where she's planning on going in the future. She has a fascinating background. And so I'm sure you're going to be as excited as I am to learn more about what she does. So, Nicole, welcome to the Business Owner Spotlight interview. Glad you could join us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you uh, for joining us. So just a little bit of background uh, about Nicole is she's been in the, the financial services business for over 20 years, and we're going to hear a little bit more about how she uh, got into the business, but also what she's doing with the business and how she applies her personal principles to what she does with her clients, but also what she's doing in the local community and how she reaches people, not just here in the Twin Cities, but really through uh, many different connections and avenues uh, around the country. And so Nicole is a very proven, uh, not only financial advisor, but she's also a proven author with five different books. She speaks publicly all the time. And she's done many different seminars and webinars that she has performed over the past many years. And one thing that I'm really looking forward to hearing about is her nonprofit uh, work that she's doing and the luncheon that she sponsors uh, in August. And so with that, just a brief introduction, you'll be able to do it much better than I am. But Nicole, tell us a little bit about your journey. It, when, when I've looked at your background, it's fascinating, but you made a pretty dramatic shift from college into what you're doing today. Can you share with us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, I think in, in life you grow up like having this plan and sometimes the plan you have doesn't necessarily come to fruition. And uh, I'm living proof of that, but grew up in Minnetonka, Minnesota. Um, ironically, that's where my 9,000 square foot commercial building is. Never planned on staying here. I was a figure skater. My daughter actually skates at the Minnetonka Ice Arena. And I had one of those aha moments when I took her skating there uh, recently. We actually have a press for Will as an ad on the board. And I was skating around and like, little did I ever think growing up in this world that I would I would own a company that then would advertise like at the rink that I that was really my second home growing up at. But I uh, went to school at St. Cloud State University, same thing, never planned on staying in Minnesota and kind of got stuck. But I had the amazing experience of studying abroad in high school and also in college. I went over and lived over in Germany. And so I, I fell in love with the United Nations and I really fell in love with Madeline Albright. I then learned about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And so mm. I went to college for international business and marketing. And my plan was to go to law school. I wanted to follow in those two women's footsteps and make, you know, just global change and, and transform things. And uh, my path wasn't <laughs> meant to be that way. Got married right out of college and married someone that dreamt of being a stockbroker his whole life. And that is how I got involved in the financial services industry. So got started at Morgan Stanley in Wyzetta. And um, unbelievably, I can't believe it's, it was 20 years ago <laughs> that I left to go independent and start my own firm. And I was married. Uh, we called it Strategic Financial and started doing a radio show here on FM 107, started writing books and um, just fell in love with helping people and, and making an impact. You know, I would joke and I was actually interviewed today on a um, New York station all about dating and money. And I, I joke that I'm like a therapist in <laughs> many days, not necessarily a, a wealth advisor, but I, uh, I really regretted not going to law school, but um, August 4th of 2010 was the first time that the 911 phone call went through and my now ex-husband um, and ex-branch manager he was, a warrant was put up for his arrest for domestic violence and assault on me and our two kids. My son was two and my daughter was six months old at the time. And it was the first time ever that like, I had to have this awakening. I, um, I had volunteered for years. I became, in 1999, I became a certified divorce financial analyst. And so I had volunteered at the various different domestic abuse shelters. I taught divorce sellers and cents and but I first had that awakening moment of like, oh my gosh, like I am a victim of domestic violence. 
And um, when that happened, the police came to my house and handed me a card to a domestic abuse shelter. And I'm like, yes, I, you know, I'm very well aware. I was just there last week volunteering. And so when I made the phone call, you know, they're like, oh, cool. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm like, I'm calling because I now need to be a client. And so I was thrown into this world um, that was just very treacherous. And and I, I, I made a commitment to myself when the police gave me that card. I'm like, when I get on the other side of this, I want to do something about it. I want to, I want to give back and I want to change things for other women because not only in our divorce, I had to give up the company name, the website, the phone number. We had 12 financial advisors and I begged for the commercial building to save my financial credit and I didn't want it. Like I really was living a world from the outside looked perfect you know, on radio, on TV, I had a business, you know, living on Lake Minnetonka, but nothing of it had I picked out myself from the car that I drove to the career, to the house that I lived in. And I really resented and hated every aspect of it. And I'm like, I've got to figure this out. And so I sat down one night, got the kids to bed and I rewrote my bucket list. And I believe out of the worst things in life come the best. And um, and so when I rewrote this list, I met with my best friend from college and I said, hey, you know, I wrote down, I read in my bucket list and I wrote down 12 things and I'm just going to do one thing a month for a year. And will you go up to northern Minnesota with me and drive a race car? Because I'm an adrenaline junkie and I driving a race car was the one of the first things on my list. And he's like, Nick, anything you do. You don't just put 100% into it. You put 180. You need to go to a real speedway. Like, go to Vegas. Go this weekend. So I booked a flight. He wouldn't come with me. <laughs> so I went by myself. And on the plane right there, I had someone that had to talk to me the whole time. But this individual changed my life. Wow. Because he was shocked. He couldn't understand why I was so young and rewrote my bucket list. He thought I had a medical condition. I was sick with something. And I'm like, no, no. Like, I'm just... I'm miserable in my life and I needed to like get myself out of it and find my confidence and find myself back. And so I, everything in my life was so negative. I couldn't tell people I was doing something on my bucket list because when you say bucket list, people think you're dying. Mm -hmm. So I just started calling it the limit list. Well, now fast forward, I have my own foundation. We grant limit list experiences. I take people on limit list trips. We have the limit list.com. We have a coaching program, we have a Facebook group, and I'm really, my goal in my journey is to be on Good Morning America, be on the Today Show, be that Ruth Bader Ginsburg that's changing people's lives when they think about their happiness. And I mean, the, and, and really how I tied this all together is I started learning some statistics. One in three Americans is happy. And to me, I'm like, seriously? Like, and my best friend who lives out in LA, she jokes, she's like, really in LA, it's like one in 25. <laughs> but it's like, we live in this world of opportunity and we're so unhappy and we're so stressed out and we're so money focused and keeping up with the Joneses. And so really I'm coming from a, a place of one, understanding always the dynamics of intimidation and control and that money can bring to people. And also as a wealth advisor, helping people really see things differently that life isn't, you know, I've had people in my office that have sat here that would give every dollar away if they could save their medical condition or save their wife or save their husband from whatever it is. And it isn't about the money. It's about what drives us and what moves us and what our why is. And so my journey, my goal is to be a, a national spokesperson really in a global. I mean, I, my dream is to, fly to Italy and bring my daughter with and speak at a women's conference and really inspire people across the world and, and stay and travel and, and experience life. And really it's all about helping people and making a difference in people's lives and helping them find happiness. Wow. Uh, talk about a journey. You know, a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you go back to those, those early years, you know, during that kind of big shift in your life, you know, from your husband into the, to that, that change you know, that transition, there's a lot of people that kind of get crushed by that, right? And so, but it sounds like you really stepped in and stepped up and took a totally different perspective, uh, which is obviously what helps. I mean, that's part of who you are, right? Your DNA. 
but which is also helping you drive uh, the, the rest of the work that you're doing. What I find interesting is we connected over you, you being CEO of Prosper Well Financial, and you barely even mentioned that. You talked about all these other things in your life that are so important to you, that are really uh, a part of who you are. Uh, how, do you, how do you marry those two things together? Yeah. I mean, really, realistically, like the live it list is just like evolved because I finally, you know, I, I, I go to Miraval and um, at Miraval, they're like, Nicole, you need to find your femininity. <laughs> and I finally understood, like I had an aha moment last year. I'm like, wow, it's really being creative. And the world of prosper well is so, so <laughs> not creative. <laughs> the world of investments is very like logical. And that's what I think I've excelled so much as being a wealth advisor is one, I'm very left-brained and I'm very right-brained. So yeah. I've always, you know, I mean, I have over 25,000 people that follow me on LinkedIn and they go there, yes, you know, for information about money, but they go there for inspiration. And so if I can come at it from a standpoint of inspiring someone and bringing down that wall, it allows them to listen and for me to use my skills as a wealth advisor or anyone on our team to really help them from a financial standpoint. Because that's one of the comments that people make when they come in here is like, I want, I mean, not only are we woman owned, but I want it to have this different feel. You know, like I'm intimidated when I go car shopping and I don't want that experience. I don't want that people to have that feeling when they're coming into a wealth advisor's office. And so not only do I want to inspire people, but I really do want to change the financial services industry. This is a phenomenal career for women. Mm -hmm. And it just, it blows my mind why not more women are in the financial services industry. And I was on a, a Zoom with a bunch of top female advisors and all of us, the one, because we were like, why, like, why are there not more women? How come we're not moving this needle? And the, the summary was all of us didn't plan on this career. Like growing up, you know, my mom was the one to be at home. And I mean, she worked, she owned a business, but she was the one to take care of the day-to-day -day finances. And she raised me to be extremely independent and never to depend on anyone. But she didn't ever say like, oh, you could be in the world of finance. She was more or less like, I don't know how you're going to do it if you don't own a business. <laughs> in so many words. And she's like, you can be president of the United States if you want to go do it. Mm. You can do anything you want, but don't expect anyone to help you. Go wow. get it on your own. And so I was raised in such that environment. I was also raised to not really share my story and to be like very private. And I was um, on a stage. I mean, it had to have been, everything happened, the, the, everything happened in 2010. It must've been like 2012, 2013. I was on a panel at a women's conference and somehow it kind of came out a little bit that I was dealing with domestic violence. I don't know if I was maybe talking about the lipstick on the piggy bank book, because in there, you know, it's like, oh, I married Prince Charming, but I really didn't. <laughs> and in so many words, like the undertone is kind of there. Well, I got off stage and the, the, like the conference people had to come up to me. And they're like, we need you to go outside because you're ruining it for the next speaker. But it was the first time that I ever really like opened up. And the line was just endless of these women coming up to me saying, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm going through this, or I went through this, or how'd you do this? And I had this aha moment of like, I've got to be vulnerable. Like I have to share my story because the more I share my story, the more I can help inspire other people. And like, if I, I am not from money <laughs> and if I can do this, if I can be a full-time single mom, and a full-time business owner and own multiple companies and a commercial building and just take risks and make it all happen. If I can do this, anyone can do it. Mm. And so really vulnerability has been my focus in sharing my story because it really helps people feel like, okay, gosh, I can talk to her. Like Prosper Wells, this safe place that I can go talk to them about yeah. anything and they'll help me with my money without judgment. Mm. Yeah, I think what's really interesting about what you've been sharing right from the very beginning is uh, this, uh, I'll call it transparency, and you said vulnerability, but certainly the transparency of it right from the very beginning part of the conversation, which 
is unusual today, both in terms of the financial services business, because I was in the financial services business. I worked for two of the biggest banks in the country, and and it was very stoic, right? Very professional and very closed and very careful. And um, I, I can only imagine what it would be like. You talk a little bit about it as a woman in the financial services business. Uh, it may even be more so that way. But your vulnerability also translates to uh, being very authentic. And really being able to share those stories, I'm sure, is what draws people to you. One of the questions I get asked a lot as an as a executive and business coach is, what is it that separates people from uh, the, the pack, so to speak? So is there anything, you've talked a lot about some of the challenges, but when it comes to the business side of Prosper Well, is there one lesson maybe that you've learned along the past 20 years that was really kind of vital that really helped you say, oh, that was, you mentioned an aha moment before, but was there something that said that this was a hard lesson, but this is what I learned from it and this is what propelled me to the next level? Now there's constantly hard lessons. <laughs> like that, yeah. I was just commiserating with another CEO friend of mine. I'm like, oh my gosh, no one ever tells you when you start a business that you have to deal with some of this stuff, yeah. how, how stressful it can be. Um, but for me, one of the, I love to read. And uh, one of the game changers for me or the aha moments was reading the book Traction by Gene Wickman. Yep. And that was so business changing for me. And we still live that every day. Like we actually, we, every morning we have a huddle and we get together and we say what we're grateful for. And then we say the three things that we're working on. And then once a week we have a longer meeting and same thing. We started off with what are we grateful for? You know, here are our goals and here's what we're working for. And then once a month we have our development day. And what it did was everything was up here, always in my brain of running the business. Yep. And it took it from my brain and it really empowered the team where they're the ones stating, oh my gosh, this is how many people, you know, attended the workshop last week. And this is how many times Nicole was interviewed. And I just booked this many speaking engagements. And so-and-so did this many appointments. And this is how many, you know, new assets we brought in this past week. It's coming from my team. And really, as a business owner, as your business grows, you've got to evolve with it and figure out the ways and the tools and the, the tricks and tips and things that you're going to use to really take your business to the next level. And that's the joy about being, it's kind of like being a parent. Like people always tell you, you know, like, oh, you know, there really is never like an easy stage because when you think they're like babies, it's like, oh my God, this is so difficult. And then all of a sudden you get the teenagers and you're like, man, Wish they were a baby. <laughs> that was that was easier. It's kind of the same thing when you're a business owner. Is like as you hit these stages of your business growing, there's different levels and different things that you'll have to deal with. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it sounds like you've really made the shift from working in the business to working on the business and allowing your team to really take care of a lot of the things that they they need to do. And we talk a lot about that at Action Coach too. This and we have what we call the six keys to winning teams. And part of that is taking letting them take risk, but letting them feel included in making decisions. And and sometimes that risk can it can be the school of hard knocks, right? Or learning the hard way. But typically, most people will learn it once, right? And they'll they'll be able to apply that lesson in their uh, their life or their business work uh, much much more effectively in the future. Well, I we're really grateful for your time. But a couple of things. For, one, where do you see you next? What what does the future part of your journey look like in the next several years for Nicole? Yeah, it's really growing. You know, continuing to grow, prosper well, and really growing the team. And so I really want to bring more females into mm -hmm. this business and really be that mentor. And so we have, we have a whole career path and basically it's taking some of the relationship managers that we have right now and elevating up to, them up to wealth advisors. And it's not that I'm, you know, going away, <laughs> it's just it really bringing that next generation and really, yeah. and that's, what's so cool is like, oh my gosh, like. Prosper Well is going to exist when I'm no longer around. And like, how cool is that? It's just, it's, it's, it feels actually very surreal many days. Um, and so, yes, it's, it's really taking that next generation and, and elevating them and being that mentor. It's also then grow, going and really going global. And so doing more speaking engagements, inspiring more people, helping more people. I am going to come out with my next book, my sixth mm -hmm. book. I am going to relaunch our podcast, um, but really it's taking everything that we're doing and growing it even more. 
and continuing to help people, but at, a, at an even bigger scale. Yeah, that's great. Well, it sounds like it's all about people for you and and the legacy of, of Prosper Well too. But it sounds like there's a lot of legacy for Nicole, uh, you know, in other parts of your life as well. And in fact, touching on that, tell us a little bit about the lunch that you've got coming up on August fourth. Yeah, so 13 years ago was the on August fourth was the first time that the 911 phone call went through, and so we're hosting an event to raise money for domestic violence. And my whole foundation, the goal is to take women and, and or men from victims to survivors. And so when, when the police came to my house and gave me a card, I was thrown into this world. I mean, I, I didn't know what child protection was. I The first phone call, one of the first phone calls that I made the next morning, I had my last year of college, I lived with a bunch of guys and, and all of them um, became police officers except for one. And, and I called one and I said, can someone use someone else's credit card to bail themselves out of jail. And like, what is bail? Like I was thrown into this world that I had no clue. And so my goal is that rather than the police handing a card and just you're up figuring it out is that we really become this surrounding group of people to help them for a whole year. So how we do it right now is in October, which is domestic violence awareness month, we accept nominations. So we host the event in August to raise funds. And then in October, we take nominations. And mm. we are looking for men and women that are either go wanting to get out of a violent situation, domestic violence, and that can be emotional, physical, anything, or are in it and trying to get out, or they've been out of it, but they're just not getting back on their feet. And so uh, we, take, we take nominations. And so right now this year, we have two women that are in the program. And what happens is, is we, I connect with them before the year is over and we give them a holiday that they wouldn't have. So my kids and I go out shopping and generally every time we do this, we're buying bed sheets and a comforter for mom for Christmas and, you know, clothes and things to, you know, be able to, for them to like sleep at night, giving them, you know, cub gift cards and target gift cards and things. And so I, with my kids, do one family generally, and then my office team goes shopping for the other family. Mm. And then um, we kick it off in January, where we do a Zoom and with whatever they need. So I'm figuring out before the year is over, do they need an attorney, a CPA, a coach, a therapist for themselves, a therapist for the kids, a nutritionist, you know, a oh, wow. trainer, you know, what, what do you, what are your goals and what do you need? What's your support system? And then we give that to them. And I have the chills as I'm talking. We give that to them for free for a year. And wow. so we all get together in, in January and do a Zoom. And I actually have one this afternoon with our woman. So we're connecting now midway through the year to say, okay, here's where your goals were. Here's where you are. Here's where you are. What do we need? What do you still need help with before yeah. the year is over? And so the woman today, you know, she wanted to get super healthy with her and her daughter. She wanted to get some some legal stuff done. She was working on some emotional issues. And then I'm helping them with the financial aspects. And so the goal is to give a support system for to, for a whole year to someone. So rather than just, here's a card, good luck, because I've yeah. made so many mistakes that affect myself and my kids to this day. And I want to provide that support system so that people don't make the mistakes that I make. And then as we get to the end of the year, uh, we give them a makeover. And I go to Mall America with a stylist with a thousand dollar shopping spree. And so the whole concept is, is that someone gets a new life. And um, that's where we have usually someone present at the August event. Um, like last year, this woman spoke and, you know, I can't predict anything, but I don't know that she would actually be here if we didn't help her get out of her situation. And that's where, like, that's what this is all about is changing lives and helping people and really transforming people, which it just, it's a snowball effect. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's significant because it, like one of the things I appreciate what you said is it wasn't just about giving a stack of gift cards to somebody and saying, good luck with it. The whole planning process and really walking it out with them throughout the year. I mean, because just the challenges to try and navigate and understand some of the details that you yourself had to walk through, it's got to be a real blessing to all these these uh, folks that you're helping. So first of all, thank you for doing that. Um, so I so just to kind of wrap things up, thanks for, for your time. But if people wanted to reach you either about Prosper Well Financial or about the about the work that you just described with the, your foundation, what would be the best way for people to get in contact with you? 
Yep. They can just go to NicoleMiddendorf.com. That's where they can get connected to Prosper Well or the Live It List, all the courses. They can get connected to the foundation because people sure can attend the event. We're looking for silent auction items, vendors. We look for women um, business owners to sell their stuff and promote their businesses at the event. So, and if someone wants to attend, they sure can. But NicoleMiddendorf.com is the best place. Otherwise, LinkedIn, you know, we're, we're everywhere. <laughs> so people can, can find us. That's fantastic. Well, this has been terrific. Uh, Nicole, thank you for your time. Thank you for all you're doing for the community, both in business, but also the local community that you just described. And what a what a blessing you are to so many people. And I look forward to seeing in touch with you. And uh, just thanks again for joining us today. Appreciate it. Yes. Thanks so much, Marty.